What a privilege to be alive today. Everybody is looking at what's happening in the world. They're consumed by the circumstances that we face. But may I remind you today that God has always left the best for the last. I believe that this is God's season and time for us. The church that I see, in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse, 30, uh, verse 43 says, And they came, and fear came, and many souls were added to the church. And many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. Many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. When you read that, you are tempted to think that the apostles were something special. That they were better than us. That they had something that we don't have. Or they are in a different category. But may I inform you that Peter had denied the Lord just a short while before he preached the, church, the sermon at the day of Pentecost. He was the one that denied three times. He was the one that said, I don't know him. On the day of Pentecost, his life was transformed. His life was changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. For the Bible says, it is not by might. Can you say that with me, somebody? It is not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Journey, let me inform you today that the church I see here, I see people rising up in the power of the Holy One of Israel. I see you that you were defeated and down, but God is going to so transform you that you will be something different. People who knew you in the past is not going to know you anymore because you are going to be changed. Come on, hallelujah. Is there anybody here believe that? Come on, I said, is there anybody here believe that? But what... What did, the, what did the apostles do? How could they do these signs and miracles? They did it because of four reasons. Number one, they did it because they had a pertinent and real life faith in the person of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, without him, we can do nothing. Come on, tell somebody. Without him, we can do nothing. But with him, we can do all things. Hallelujah. You see, without him, I'm nothing in myself. But when I know that I know that I know that he is the word of God. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. May I inform you today that Jesus... Jesus Christ is still the same today as he was 2,000 years ago. He is the same. Come on, say yes, Lord, if you believe that. I'm talking about the one that came born of a virgin. I'm talking about the one that lived a sinless life. I'm talking about the one when he was baptized, the heavens opened up and God said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I'm not talking about a man. I'm not talking about some religious leader. I'm talking about the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the same yes today, today, and forever. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking about the one that walked on water. I'm talking about one who can talk to devils and they obey. I'm talking to the one who spoke to the wind and the wind obey. Come on, people. He is no other one but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm talking about the one who came to Joseph of Armatia and says, Hey, I want to borrow your tomb for a couple days. Have you ever heard of anybody borrowing a tomb? I'm going to borrow your tomb. I will not stink it up. I'll give it back to you better than how you had it before. Because when I die, I'm not going to stay in 
the earth. I will descend in the lower parts of the earth. I will spoil principalities and powers. I will cause devils to bow and take away the keys of death and hell when I arrive there. And the Bible says when he arrived, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. How did he represent himself? He spoke of himself as the King of glory. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord who is mighty in battle. And the Bible says he spoiled principalities and powers and made an open show of them. He defeated the devil in his own domain. Come on. Hallelujah. He defeated the devil not when he was alive, but when he was dead. If he can defeat him when he is dead, what would he do when he comes sitting, riding on a white horse? Come on, hallelujah. He took away the keys of death and hell and he arose triumphantly. The same disciples that saw him dead, they were the ones who witnessed that he came back triumphant. John says, I cern to see the voice that's speaking to me and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks and I see one standing in the midst he had his hair as white as snow he had a garment down to the foot but the thing that struck me the most is that he had a golden belt around his waist meaning he is the champion of all champions come on hallelujah he is the undefeated. He is the undisputed. He is the forever champion. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He conquered sickness. He conquered sin. And he alone is God Almighty. Come on, hallelujah. He is the Alpha and Omega. Can you say it with me? He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and he in the end. He is the first and he is the last. He is Adonai, El Shaddai. He is Jehovah. Come on, church. There is nobody like him. But you see, when you believe who he is, you can do what he did. The problem today is that we kind of relegate him to our level. We try to preach a Christ to make him palatable to the world. But we can't bring him down to the world. We got to let the world know he is God. See, when I go among the Hindus and preach in these places, I don't bring him down. I don't even tell them to close their eyes and then raise their hands. I tell them he is Lord and they get up from their seat and they come and bow before him. Come on, hallelujah. Because he is the only one that is able to set you free. The Bible says whosoever be in Christ, he is a new creature. These disciples, these weak men... This, these men that ran away, the only one that stayed was John. When Jesus looked down and saw John and said to John, here is your mother and told Mary, that's your son. All the others ran. So they were not nothing any special than you and I, but they needed Jesus just like we need him. And if they could have him and do miracles, I prophesy to you and journey, we're going to rise up in this place we're gonna see miracles in this place the second thing is that they didn't only believe in the person of Jesus but they believe in the promise of Jesus he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel he said and I will be with you he made them a promise. The promise is that you don't have to do it on your own. You don't have to face these battles on your own. 
In fact, in yourself, you don't have the ability to do. The mountains are too high. The giants too big. The struggles too many. And that's what Moses and Joshua encountered. And that's why when God came to Moses, he told him, take off your shoes for the place is holy. What God was saying is when you take it off, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to step into your situation. And what was impossible with men is going to be possible with your God. Come on, hallelujah. If I know that if I go, he is going with me, why do I be afraid? If I know that he made me a promise, a promise that is irrevocable, a promise that is not changeable, a promise that nobody can alter or break or change, the promise that if you go, I will be with you. I will give you the words to speak. I will fight your battles for you. I will defend you. I will make a way for you. You see, that's the way God has always done it. Whoever heard of defeating a city by walking around it? Whoever heard that you can break down these giant walls by just shouting? But you see, when you do it, what God said, he is going to do what he promised. Come on, hallelujah. Whoever heard that you can stretch a staff over a sea and part the sea and make dry land. But when I do what God said, he is going to do what only he can do. And everybody would know that God did it. He said, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for us. I came to prophesy to somebody today. Your people are going to have to talk. They would change their words concerning you. The same people that used to put you down is going to have to acknowledge. Look what the Lord has done. Come on, hallelujah. And the same people that saw Peter running is the same ones that see him standing. I came to tell you, this is your day. Hallelujah. They're going to have to acknowledge that the Lord has done it for you. You see, the thing about it is, they believe in the person of Jesus. You see, it is not us the working the miracles. Jesus says, I do nothing of myself, but what I see the Father do it that I do. He said, it's the Father that does the works. I came to tell you today, God is going to touch you. He is going to deliver you because this is not the work of a man. It is the doing of the Lord and it's marvelous in our eyes. The third thing that the, the apostles, why they were able to do these works, it wasn't only because of they knew the person of Jesus and they believe his promise, but they literally capture his presence with them. You see, if we come to church and just sing some songs and go home, we can't do nothing. But when we worship like we did today, you would have to be dead not to know that God is in this place. Come on. Come on, hallelujah. I said God is in this place. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Come on, hallelujah. So today we cancel every demonic assignment from your life. You are walking out free. I say you're going to walk out free. Oh, you're going to walk out free. Tell somebody I'm walking out free. There are things that I've been believing God for and God is going to do it today. Come on, hallelujah. They believe him. You see, where the presence of the Lord is, the atmosphere changes. In the moment God shows up, come on, hallelujah. It was an atmosphere. 
atmosphere for miracles. There is an atmosphere for deliverance. There is an atmosphere for freedom. You came in bound, but all of a sudden, you did not plan to raise your hands, but the only the glory of God show up, and your hands is up in the air, and you're worshiping him. Because there is nobody like Jesus. You see, the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, the Bible says there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. These men didn't do these things because they had some miracle potion. They didn't do these things because some supernatural wisdom. No, they didn't do these things because they were better. They did it because they believe and literally really capture and the presence of God in their lives. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I had a crusade in, in Suriname once. We did it in a very big stadium. And the Lord said to me, he said at nine o'clock, I will come in the building. And I did not know what he meant. Just before nine, I, instead of preaching, I began to worship him. And all of a sudden, I heard screams such as I've never heard before. Suriname is a country with great demonic activity. When I opened my eyes, there were people demon-possessed standing to the front. They look as though they came to tear me apart. And my thoughts, what am I going to do? So I just raised my hands and kept worshiping. Hallelujah. How many of you know when you don't know what to do, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. I said when you don't know what to do, bless the Lord. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul, say my soul, somebody. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. So I kept worshiping him. I raised my hands like this. And the moment I point, they all fell on the ground. And all their demons inside them. And God says, if your point can knock them down, speak the word. And I command, and they were instantly delivered. It wasn't because of anything that I did. It is the presence of the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. Journey, we are going to be a church of encounters with the glory of God in this place. You know, because there are some people who are hungry here. You see, for God to show up, you got to be hungry. And the Bible says, if you are hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. And there's some people who will not say no. They would not be discouraged. They refuse to stop. They refuse to hold back. They just hungry. They just want God to show up. And I don't know about you. I knew some about God. But I want more. Come on and say I want more. Because God is more than enough. They believe his presence. You see, his presence makes the difference. Jonah was in the belly of the fish, way down at the bottom of the ocean. And the Bible says, Jonah said, I will praise God right where I am. I may be in a bad place, but I believe that God is right here with me where I am. Some of you may be going through hell today, but I want you to praise him because he is going to show up right where you are. Come on, I said he's going to show up. The Bible said, Jonah said, I'm going to bless the Lord with a voice of thanksgiving. I may be in a fish belly. I may be in a bad place. But I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to worship God. The moment he did, God spoke to the fish. The God I serve, he know fish language. Come on, hallelujah. He can talk to fish. 
And the Bible says he spoke to the fish and the fish vomited Jonah on the shore. The fish took Jonah to his destination and vomited him where he is supposed to be. The devil thought he had you. He don't know that what the devil meant for evil. What the devil meant for evil, God is turning it around. Come on, I said he's turning it around. I see him turning it around. I see he thought he had you. He thought your life was over. He thought when, when Peter cursed and denied, he thought he had him. But Jesus prayed for him. Hey, I came to tell you we have been praying for you. You are not going to die now. You are not, be, will not be destroyed. Your life will turn around and it will begin today. They believed. They believed that God's presence makes the difference. She, Jonah believed that God was not limited only to a building in Jerusalem. That God can be with me right here in this belly of this fish. That God can make a way where there seemed to be no way. That God can open the door. That God can heal you. That God can deliver you. That the people, everybody in your family may have written you off. But they don't know that God can turn it around and make a way for you. He can prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies why did they how did they how was it able that they could have worked miracles that they could have done signs and wonders the same man that did not believe he was going to raise from the dead they believe in his person they believe his promise they believe and inculcated his presence, but they also believe in his mighty power. They believe that there is nothing that he can't do. Come on, church. Do you believe that? Do you believe that there is nothing he can't do? Come on. Hallelujah. Do you believe that God can turn it around today? Do you believe that God can make a way today? Do you believe that God can open the door today? Do you believe that he can turn the situation around today? Some of you have been praying and nothing happened like Lazarus. When Lazarus was sick, they sent a message and told, and told Jesus that he was sick. And Jesus delayed because he knew that his sickness was not unto death. It was for the glory of God. Hallelujah. So he waited. He waited until Lazarus died and still didn't show up. He waited four days until he began to smell when nobody wanted him around. Some of you in that same situation where everybody kind of want to turn and put you away. They don't believe that you can ever come back. But I came to tell you that Jesus showed up at the right time and the right place. And hear what they said. If you were here, he would not have died. His sister had faith for the past. And Jesus says, your brother shall rise. And she had faith faith for the future but she had no faith for the present Jesus said show me where you laid him and that's what we got to do today. We got to come back to God right where you are. Don't pretend to be something else. Don't act as though everything is fine when it's not. Somebody asks you, how are you doing? Oh, I'm on top of the world when you are dying on the inside. Be real. Be real. And say what is going on. Hear what Jesus said. Take me where you lay him today. He is going to come right where your situation is. And he is going to turn it around. Jesus said, roll away the stone. There's something you got to do. And that is you got to come real. And you got to open the door. And you got to roll away the stone. Hear what Jesus said, roll away the stone. All I need you to do is show me where you lay him and roll away the stone. I'll do the rest. You see, because I got 
power to do the rest. I want you to do what you can do and that is believe. As long as you believe, I'm going to couple your belief with my divine ability and I'm going to turn the situations around. Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, he who was dead. He was in paradise already. And the moment he heard the words, that word grab hold of him, bring him back all that distance, get into his body, change the molecules of his body, remove death and decay, bring back life in his body. And he came back from the lead. I came to tell you today, he's going to turn your situation around and show everybody. Come on, I said he's going to show them that you, you belong to him. How did the disciples see signs and wonders? They believed. Hear what Jesus said. Did he, the people ask him, what must we do that we may work the works of God? He said that you might believe on him. You might believe on him. You might believe. I came to tell you, I see you as I prayed last night. I see doors opening up miraculously. I see doors opening up supernaturally I see favor being released in your life I see deliverance coming yes some of you have been struggling to recover from the things that held you but today he is going to deliver you hallelujah and everybody would know that he is your God that he is your God let the worshipers come but I came to say to you, the disciples, it wasn't that they were something so special and they had, a, they had a, 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 an ability to, they were beyond our, our, all our natural struggles and, and inabilities. But they were men with like passions, but they believed. Today, we are going to step out in faith and believe. Because that's what God is doing today. The situation in the world is real astounding. Man, the problems are unsurmountable. The wall's great. The challenges many. Inflation great. Pressures on every side. The pandemic had its way. And the war in Ukraine. And, and all kinds of circumstances. But God has chosen today, this season, to show up in his glory. Hallelujah. He's he said, rise and shine. Come on, hallelujah. He said, rise and shine. For thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said, darkness will cover the earth. And gross darkness the people. But the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. Tell somebody, this is my time. Hallelujah. This is my season to rise up. This is my season to walk in favor. You see, today, today, God is appointed to show the world his people. He waited until the situation looked black and dark and bleak. And then the glory shows up because light shines better in darkness. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I said light shines better in darkness. When the situation is dark is when he is going to show up. When there is an extremity is when he is going to demonstrate his power. I came to prophesy the journey today. We are going to see the glory of God in this place a way we have never seen before. We're going to walk in favor. Come on, hallelujah. Because God is going to show the world that he is stand upon your feet with me and let us worship him a moment we want to believe with you for supernatural breakthroughs in your life we want to believe with you today that today 
today the things that held you back, the things that hold you up is going to release you. You're going to walk out and you're going to walk in the best time, the best season, the best hour, in the best time of your life. By the grace of God, just go ahead 